The ticking of a clock is a sound we all know very well. But have you ever thought about what makes the clock tick? Inside every mechanical clock, there are wheel-shaped parts called gears that spin together in perfect harmony to move the hour in minute hands. Gears play a crucial role in nearly all types of machinery. In this video, we'll dive into the fascinating world of gears, explore their various types, and uncover their many applications. But first, let's get into some theory. At their core, gears are just the wheels with the teeth cut around their edges. A gear is defined by two key features, the number of teeth and the reference circle. The reference circle is an imaginary circle that represents a gear. When two gears interact, their reference circles touch, creating a perfect connection. The pitch of a gear is the distance between two adjacent teeth measured along the reference circle. It is calculated by dividing the circumference of the reference circle by the number of teeth. For gears to work together, they must have the same pitch otherwise, they won't fit properly. Now let's talk about some gear terminology. The gear connected to the power source, like a motor or engine, is known as the driver gear, while the gear it meshes with is called the driven gear. Between these two gears, the smaller one is called the pinion, and the larger one is called the wheel. Now, let's discuss why we use gears in machines. Gears serve four main purposes in machines. Firstly, they transfer power from the engine or motor to the parts of the machine that perform useful work. Secondly, they can change the direction of motion. Thirdly, gears can increase or decrease the speed of motion. Finally, they help adjust the force applied, providing the right amount of power exactly where it's needed. Let's unpack these points to see how gears accomplish these tasks. In machines, Power must be transmitted from the motor to various parts, and this can be done through belts, chains, or gear. Belts use friction between a belt and a pulley to transmit power between shafts. They are ideal for situations where shafts are spaced further apart and offer a nice balance between cost and efficiency. But there's a slight downside. Belts can occasionally slip off the pulley. Chains work by transferring power through a series of interconnected links that engage with sprockets. They provide a more secure drive than belts, reducing the risk of slippage, and are suitable for intermediate distances. Gears transmit power through direct contact between their teeth, eliminating slippage. When two gears mesh, the teeth of one gear fit into the spaces between the teeth of the other. This meshing allows one gear to drive the other. This is how gears transmit power among them. They are the preferred choice for power transmission when shafts are closer together and are more efficient than belts or chains. This is a simple gear setup consisting of two gears of equal size. In gear terminology, size refers to the number of teeth each gear has. When force is applied to gear A, it transfers this force to gear B causing both gears to rotate. However, gear B rotates in the opposite direction to gear A. This example illustrates how a change in the direction of motion is achieved through gears. But what if we want both gears to turn in the same direction? We can add a third gear, known as an idle gear, between the two. This idle gear ensures that gear B turns in the same direction as gear A. This method works well when the gears' axes of rotation are parallel to each other. Now, let's look at a different setup involving bevel gears. In this arrangement, the gears' axes of rotation intersect at a right angle. Here, the driven gear rotates along an axis perpendicular to that of the driver gear, demonstrating yet another way gears can change the direction of motion. Now, let's explore how gears can change the speed of motion and the force they create. Picture a large gear with 32 teeth, working together with a small gear that has only 8 teeth. When you turn the large gear, the small gear spins much faster. In fact, for each complete turn of the large gear, the small gear turns 4 times. 
This relationship between how fast the two gears turn is called the gear ratio. The gear ratio determines how the speed or force is adjusted in a gear system. To find the gear ratio, you simply look at how many teeth each gear has. Gear ratio equal number of teeth on driven gear slash number of teeth on driving gear. In our example, the driven gear has eight teeth and the driving gear has 32 teeth, giving us a one to four gear ratio. That means the small gear will spend four times faster than the large one. But there's a trade-off. While speed goes up, force goes down. You sacrifice power for speed. Although the small gear will spend four times faster than the large gear, it would not have much force. Think about a car in fifth gear. It runs really fast, but you cannot start a car in fifth gear because it doesn't have much force. You have to start a car in first gear, which can provide a lot of force, but cannot achieve a higher speed. Not all gears look or function exactly the same. The type of gear used depends on the specific task it needs to perform, such as how the shafts are oriented or how much force is required. The most common and basic type of gear is called a spur gear. These gears have straight teeth and are used when two shafts need to spin parallel to each other. They are efficient and easy to make, but they can be noisy because all the teeth connect at once, which creates a jarring sound. This limits their use in high-speed applications. A great example of spur gears in action is the planetary gearbox found in car automatic transmissions, ensuring smooth gear shifts thanks to its clever arrangement of central sun and planet gears. In a planetary gearbox, the sun and planet gears are the spur gears. Helical spur gears are similar to spur gears but their teeth are cut at an angle to the axis of rotation. This angle means that when two helical gears mesh, the teeth don't engage along their entire width at once. Instead, contact begins at one end and moves across the tooth face. This results in smoother and quieter operation compared to spur gears. However, the angled teeth also create a thrust along the axis of the shaft which requires special bearings to handle. A common use for these gears is in a car's gearbox, which consists of a series of helical gears. The gearbox takes power from the engine and delivers it to the wheels to make the car move. The herringbone gear is essentially a double helical gear. It has teeth angled in opposite directions on the same gear wheel, resembling a herringbone pattern. This design has the advantage of cancelling out the axial thrust generated by single helical gears, making thrust bearings unnecessary. Herringbone gears are often used in heavy machinery. When you need to transmit motion between shafts that are not parallel, bevel gears are often used. These gears are cone-shaped with teeth on the cone surface. They can connect shafts lying at any given angle though they are most commonly used for shafts at 90 degrees. A common use for bevel gears is in a car's differential system, where they take power from the engine and transfer it to the car wheels. The differential mechanism allows the tires to rotate at different speeds, which is useful when a car is going around a corner. In some cases, gears need to fit into small spaces. Internal gears are designed with teeth on the inside of a ring, making them ideal for compact designs, such as the planetary gears used in automatic car transmissions. In the planetary gears, the outer ring is the internal gear. To convert rotary motion into linear motion, or vice versa, the rack and pinion system is used. This consists of a circular gear, the pinion, meshed with a straight bar with teeth cut along its edge, the rack. As the pinion rotates, it pushes the rack along, creating linear movement. Its ability to convert rotation into linear movement makes it ideal for steering systems and vehicles. 
Turning the steering wheel rotates a shaft connected to the pinion gear. The pinion meshes with the rack, a straight bar of teeth. As the pinion rotates, it pushes or pulls the rack side to side, which in turn moves rods connected to the wheels, causing them to turn. For achieving very high speed reduction ratios between non-parallel and non-intersecting shafts, often at a 90 degree angle, worm gears are the go-to solution. A worm gear set consists of a worm, which looks like a screw, and a worm wheel, which is the tooth gear that meshes with the worm. For each revolution of the worm, the worm wheel advances by only one tooth, resulting in a significant reduction in speed. Many worm gear sets have a unique property called self-locking, meaning the worm can easily drive the worm wheel, but the worm wheel cannot easily drive the worm backwards. This acts like a built-in brake. However, worm gears often have lower efficiency compared to other gear types due to the significant sliding friction between the worm and the worm wheel teeth. They are commonly used in applications like hoists, conveyor systems, and fine-tuning mechanisms. So, next time you see a machine in action, remember the amazing gears working tirelessly inside. These seemingly simple tooth wheels are a testament to human ingenuity.